in here. All right, let me uh, let me bring my buddy Josh in. I'll let him introduce his, himself. And uh, you guys obviously know who I am, but this is my buddy Josh Satin. He's a great YouTube uh, creator, and he also specializes in farming and stuff like that, but uh, is very knowledgeable with gear as well. He's a really smart guy all around. So uh, please, Josh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, J Jay, thanks for having me on, man. I know this is kind of like a last minute, like let's just talk about cameras today. So uh, yeah, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to come and chat with your audience. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I've am i been on YouTube for about three years. Uh, my main channel is a, a farming channel. That's about, I'm a farmer, I'm a part-time farmer. And so that channel has grown tremendously. Um, coming up on three years on YouTube, almost 200,000 subscribers. Um, and in that time, I've developed a huge passion for cameras and videography. And I love nerding out on the stuff. So I have a, another <laughs> channel, which I do talk about cameras and stuff. So, um, and so Jason and I are always like talking about Sony cameras and stuff. So hopefully we're going to get into FX3 and A7 IV today. So I'm pretty excited. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like, so I'm curious, uh, you YouTube channel success was extremely fast uh, for your farming channel. What kind of equipment did you start with when you were doing that channel? Cell phone and I think a Rode Video Micro and a $20 Amazon tripod. That was my setup for probably <laughs> 10, 12 videos. I can't remember. And the first few I edited on my phone, uh, eventually switched over to, I don't even know, like some free something on my computer and then eventually bought a camera and... Uh, was editing, um, you know, so I was using DaVinci Resolve for a long time because it was free. I know that's usually not a program that people yeah. start with because it is pretty advanced. And then last year I uh, bought a Mac and have been using Final Cut since. But uh, yeah, my first camera was the Canon M50. That was the first camera I bought oh, for okay. YouTube. Yep. It's not a bad camera, uh, the M50. No, and I've, I've been plagued with this have to try a new camera every few months uh, thing. <laughs> think a lot of us get so i've tried <laughs> i've shot on so many cameras mainly canon and sony though okay that makes sense um all right so let's see what else we got here very good so you what you're actually using the uh i mean i just watched this great video that you put out about the sony a7 IV. uh i know you've been having really good luck with it uh great color i actually saw some of the footage that you took with that camera and, and the sharpness is off the charts, like you were saying, that that uh, down sampling that it does, or super sampling, whatever they call it, uh, resulted in much sharper footage than you were getting from your other more expensive cameras, which was quite shocking, honestly, coming from my perspective, never using those higher end cameras myself uh, until just recently with this FX3. Um, yeah, so. The, I've, so I've shot on, in terms of Sony, um, my main camera was the F A7S III and then the FX3 for a long time, which are the same image out of those two cameras. Um, mm -hmm. I've owned the FX6 as well for a short period of time. And yeah, the A7 IV is just, the image is better than all of those cameras, in my opinion. It's more detailed, it's sharper. Uh, the colors are slightly more accurate. Um, the, and for me, like every, you know, someone who films myself a lot and you're staring at your face all the time on the screen, when you change cameras you notice a difference in quality because you're staring at this image all the time. And so for me, when I started shooting on the a7 IV, I got it right when it came out. I was just like, this looks better. It just looks better. Uh, and there's a lot of limitations to the a7 IV as well as a video camera. We can get into some of that stuff too, especially as we compare with the FX3. But overall, like the image quality, hands down better than the, for video is better than, than all the other Sonys that I've used. So that's where I'm like, I wanna use it all the time, but it has limitations. Yeah, it's just shocking to hear, you know, it's like, like, why would Sony do that? Like looking at it from that perspective, you know, it, it is shocking. But I guess, like you said, the limitations, it does make sense. So they're giving you that quality, but they're also giving you those limitations. So even though it can do it in a pro oriented environment, people aren't going to want to use a camera that can't hold up with the heat and things like that. You just cannot have a camera shut down when you're doing something professional. It's not an option. It just can't happen, you know, so... It's just one of those things that that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I've been noticing so far with the FX3, uh, the image quality is fantastic as far as the color goes. Um, I have not used that. Uh, I mean, I did use the A7 IV, and I didn't notice it that much better, just in, in my opinion. It, it reminded me of my A7C, the way it looked. Mm -hmm. um, but that 10-bit video, you were telling me, you're like, Jay, you got to try the 10-bit. And when I did, that was night and day. Uh, my A7C can't do 10-bit. So that was an eye-opening, I mean, grading the footage 
was so much easier with the 10 bit. Mm-hmm. It, it was just shocking. Like that justifies the price difference right there. That one thing uh, for somebody like me, you know, I, so that was eye opening to me as well. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, fascinating that this FX three has really oh guys. Check this out. Watch this. Did it work? Oh yeah. Check that out. I got my overhead rig. So this FX3 is unbelievable. This is such a cool camera. I've, I've had so much fun using this over the past week or two. And I just just published a video today explaining who the FX3 is for. So, it, it, you know, it's because a lot of people don't know. It's A lot of people think it's just an A7S3 with a different camera body. But it's actually more than that. It's, a, it's different than that, in my opinion. Um, it, it's a more rugged camera, and it could handle that the higher temperatures and longer recording times and and things like that plus the camera body itself is so beefy it it just seems much more rugged uh it's a much more professional grade camera or like a commercial grade camera you know like if you buy like a commercial grade grill it's just way better you know like the knobs are stronger like everything's just better even as simple as like a an outlet if you buy a commercial grade outlet for your home you know, the, the outlet itself, it's just like the, the plugs are so much better and stronger and they could take so many more cycles and, and it's just a different grade of quality. And um, it, that's really what I noticed more than anything when I got the FX3 at first. And I was kind of surprised that most people were just saying it's an A7S III with a different body. It's like, I mean, I, I, it's, that's kind of true, but also... It's it's I think it's more than that. I, I I just feel like it's a it's a much more capable camera. Yeah. So this is the A seven four I'm holding up just so you guys can see them both next to each other, sort of. Yeah, that's a sweet camera too, no doubt about it. You know that camera seems it's it. Hey, what's up, Raphael? Happy Thursday. Hey, Jeffrey, how you doing? Um, and yes, Mark, I'm using a Mac, correct? MacBook Pro. Yeah, that A7 IV is nice. It's a great camera, buddy. I really liked it. What did you think yeah. about that grip? Is the grip the same? Can you just hold that up one more time? I was curious so, about the inside of the grip. It looks So very... the grip is... Sorry, I'm trying to get out of this frame. I'm just shooting on the FX3 right now. But um, it's different than the, a, than the FX3. Uh, the FX3 has more of like a triangular sort of grip to it. It feels very much like a triangle when you hold it. Um, the A7 IV feels very similar to like the A7S III um it's but it's 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 a solid grip for sure um it does feel good in your hands but as you said it doesn't feel as like commercial feeling it doesn't feel quite as like like the fx3 feels more like a brick in your hand i i really do prefer the way the fx3 feels i love the button layout um is you know set up for video um and and all that stuff and as I said, there's some features in the FX3 that are better, but uh, if you're talking straight up noise performance and image quality, that's where I found the a7 IV to be a better camera, but that's not the whole package, you know what I mean? Um, and there's some new tech in the, in the a7 IV besides the image quality because of that oversampling, but it has a, the newer autofocus from the A1, um, focus breathing compensation, I, I cannot that's wait a cool for one. It really is a. It, I don't want to use the term game changer. It's not quite a game changer because that term gets tossed around too much. But it's really nice, and I wish it was in the FX3. I hope it comes in soon because they put it in the FX6. So hopefully we see it as a firmware update. You know, I saw there was a firmware update the other day, and I, I read through it quickly, so I might have missed it. But it, it looked like it only had the USB streaming feature that the they added for the my Sony A7C. So now you could just plug it into the computer, and it'll start streaming without having used the app. So it looked like that was available, but I didn't notice the focus breathing. But I 100% oh. agree. When I was going through, it might be there in the update. I have to double check that. But like when that would I was have going been big news. The, I feel like I would have heard about it. But <laughs> <laughs> it is big news. When I was going through the menu though, and I saw it wasn't there, I was like, "Oh man, that really is." I, I was shocked that it wasn't there, um, considering it's a cinema grade camera. I mean, that's what Sony's calling it, anyways. But yeah, interesting. That's cool. I'll switch the camera back. Um, yeah, it's Thursday, Raphael. I appreciate it. I was just looking here. We got uh, another comment here. Let me drag this up, see what it says here. I have an A7C, A7 III, looking to sell my A7 II and buy the FX3. Wow, that's a, that's a pretty good plan right there. You're, you're talking about selling your A7 III, I'm guessing? That's a solid move, uh, if you ask me, especially if you don't need the viewfinder. That viewfinder, though, if you need that viewfinder... I would get the A7S III probably because uh, some people rely on it and you really do need it in those environments if you're somebody that uses it. I can't see 
being used to using a viewfinder and switching to a screen if you're trying to track moving subjects. It's just not going to be a good day. I don't think if you if if that's you're the type of person that needs that uh, viewfinder. But I'm getting used to using the screen more and more. And and since I have the A7C, uh, I barely ever use the viewfinder. I only use it when I'm outside and I just can't see the screen good enough. That is the only time I use the viewfinder. So that's just personal. You know, if I was a sports shooter, I'd probably be using it all the time. So it, it just it depends on your workflow, you know. But yeah, I think that's a good idea uh, you got going there. Can't go wrong. Um, let's see. Scott's reviews. Let's see. What, this is a pretty good comment. Uh, funny how all of a sudden creators today are talking about the FX3. And it's like, you know, I I swear I was thinking the same thing. And I'm like, is it just because I got it and YouTube's listening and now it's just feeding me all this FX3? <laughs> like, I don't know if it picks up. Like, it just knows you have one. And it's like, oh, feed them the FX3. Because I'm seeing it on YouTube like crazy now. FX3, FX3. But I'm working with it. So it kind of makes sense why it's on my feed. Yeah, I think I'll comment on that for a second. I think, you know, I think the FX3 was the camera that act, everybody actually wanted when the A7S3 came out. And everyone was so excited about the A7S3 because it was five years since the A7S2. Everyone's pumped about it. Including myself, I bought an A7S3 right when it came out. And, uh, when the FX3 came out, everyone's like, what the hell? That's the camera I wanted. So <laughs> time went by and like people weren't selling their A7S3s to get the FX3s. And now as more people are like the options that are out there, they're realizing the FX3s a great camera and people are buying them and using them. And for good reason, like it, yeah. I mean, and and you can't even get an FX6 right now if you want one. They've been back ordered since like the, up till like December now. So it's but kind of like everything's back ordered. Yeah. Yeah, the FX3 yeah, is back sure. order too. On um, BH Photo, you can't get the FX3 either. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, it seems like some some of those cameras get revisited and then people are like, oh, this camera's awesome. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's been out for over a year, you know? <laughs> well, honestly, I dismissed it kind of, Josh, because I'm like, oh, it's just a, it's an A7S3, like pretty much what everybody said. And it's more money, you know, and it has that XLR mount, which is cool. This thing here, actually, I could switch and show. I know you guys probably saw this already, but it comes with this XLR adapter and so that gives you the ability to have that killer mm. audio quality you know anywhere you could just yeah. bring this with you and it goes right into the memory card so your good audio is you don't have to sync it after the fact in post-processing and that's often overlooked when you say it's the same as the a7s3 because when it comes with this like 500 hundred dollar audio adapter it factors into the price point a little bit as well because this is more expensive than the A7S III. And I noticed a bunch of people on YouTube were like, I can't believe it costs more than the A7S III and it actually has less without the viewfinder. And uh, it's like, well, you know, a lot of factors, a lot of factors. Uh, you just got to. Yeah, I mean, the XLR K3M adapter is $600 and the difference between the S3 and the FX3 is 400 So I know you lose the EVF, but I, for me, like I really use XLR inputs a lot. And so that's a huge thing for me to have that on my camera, especially when I'm doing documentary work. But the thing of, that most people don't realize about the FX3 until they actually hold it and use it, it just feels like a different camera. I know it's the same guts as an A7S3, but it just feels like a different camera. I can't really explain it. It's kind of just the way the buttons are, the way the camera feels, um, and just knowing there's a fan in there, like it will never yeah. overheat. I know that, that I haven't fan. really heard of any. I haven't really heard of any fan with an A7S3 overheating, but I just know the FX3 will not overheat. Like no way. Yeah, I don't think so. They're, they they Sony's claiming uninterrupted 4K at 60p, like indefinitely. So I think with that statement, Sony is admitting it probably or could overheat at extended 120 recording, you know, in high temperatures, because they're not guaranteeing that won't fail. But they're saying uninterrupted 60. So it's impressive. And the A7S doesn't offer that, you know, so that is a huge difference. And then to your point, this thing feels like a brick in your hand. That mm -hmm. thick chassis with the holes in it and stuff, uh, you could see, like, the, how deep these threads go, you know, and that's how thick. I don't know exactly how thick this magnesium is, but this thing feels so solid. Like, there's no flex. There's no movement, you know, at, not that the other cameras flex, but it just doesn't feel the same, to your point. This feels like a brick, um, which makes it stand out from any other Sony camera I've used, which is one of the reasons why I was excited to, to review this thing and play with it uh, for a bit. But um, let's see here. We've got another question. Um, uh, all right. I'm good. I'm good. Let's see here. 
just got the a7 IV. All right, let's bring that up there. Just got the a7 IV. I'm coming from an a7. Yeah. That's that's a huge upgrade. <laughs> that is a yeah, huge man. upgrade. Good for you, Jeff. Jeffrey. All right, let's see here. This window I need to move. It's kind of annoying. I could put that up there, I guess. All right, so Raphael dropped a comment. Let's see what he's got to say. FX3 is all that I need in a video camera. Tiny, killer, and low light. 4K 120, 2K 240. Yeah, that 2K 240 is another thing. I actually haven't tested that yet, but uh, that is a cool feature. A lot of the Sony cameras have what's called high frame rate mode. Uh, more of the point and shoot style cameras, like the RX10, the RX100s, they have this high frame rate mode that'll do, you know, 480, 720 frames per second, and even a thousand frames per second. But the resolution chops down a lot, so it's not really that usable. But the 240 is one of my favorites for those smaller cameras because that footage actually looks amazing, and it's just super slow motion. It it makes water look, you know, water just looks so slow. Even fire, if you film fire when the flames are moving slow like that, it really looks like magical. Um, so that is a cool bonus feature that it has that uh, 240 at 2K. You ever use slow mo, Jeff or uh, Josh? I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I used to shoot a lot of 120. Um, I, I saw been some lately. of your farming your farming machines when you were harvesting lettuce. I was watching the other day. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You had like a you had that slowed down, and it was like spitting off. I, I I'm pretty sure you did some slow mo on that. I think I know which clip you're talking about. Yeah, so uh, I was into using 120 a while ago, and lately I've really just stayed away from it for the most part, unless I feel like I really needed it. Um, and I was just, it's just like YouTube, like, oh, I want to do 120p because it looks cool with music, <laughs> yeah. and you know, and then I'll just focus more on like framing and storytelling and and those sorts of things. Um, and I, I I have been using it less, so but it is, it's crazy cool. I mean, the FX3's got 4K 120 with like a 10% crop. Uh, 2K 240, like Raphael was saying, is is just incredible. Um, and that's some of the limitations with the A7 IV. I mean, this does 4K 60, but it is cropped um, and doesn't do 4K 120. So if those are things that are important, then you realize you're going to need the uh, the FX3. I, you know, I noticed I was doing, um, I was playing around with this the other day with my kids outside, and I, I for the first time was using the 4K 120. And when I brought it in to Final Cut and was like messing around with it and then watched it, I was like, wow, that's going to be hard to go back to 1080. Like I can't, it is, yeah. I can't see, I mean, 1080 looks horrible when you compare it to the 4K. I mean, in, in hindsight, I didn't think it was that bad. I'm like, nah, it's cool. You know, I'm showing my mountain bike or something in slow motion. I'm like, oh, it looks great. It looks great. And then uh, now I'm looking at it and that 4K, it's so sharp. I mean, you could see the hairs uh, it's like, oh my gosh, slow motion and you have hair detail. Like that's a uh, you know, game changer. <laughs> but, well, you know, it is what it is. Um, all right, Scott, what do we got here? I have an A7 IV and you sold your A7C. No regrets. What was your beef with the A7C? That's a pretty good camera. I guess you just didn't need two. Um, yeah, A7 IV is definitely significantly better than the A7C. Um but the A7C is pretty capable. Absolutely. All right, All right Raphael had some, uh, he found a balance with the focus breathing. It's there, but uh, have it subtle. Okay. Yeah. It depends on the lenses. Some lenses breathe yeah. a lot more than others. And 100%. I know that like, you know, some of the new G Master Primes like breathe a ton. Um, I found that my... Um, the zooms that I use all the time don't breathe that much. I did a video about focus breathing on the a7 IV and actually measured it. It was only like a, I think the focus breathing compensation is only like 4% crop. So like on those two lenses, so they didn't really like, they don't breathe that much, but some of the Sony lenses do breathe quite a bit. Yeah. And if you guys don't know what focus breathing is, by the way, that's when, um, when you change your focus from one area of the scene to another um, you actually get what it looks like. It, it look actually looks like the lens is zooming a little bit. So you'll see like the edges change, like the edges will like change a little bit and it's distracting. And uh, that's what's, that's what focus breathing is in case you're unaware. Um, I, it's like Josh was saying that some lenses are way more noticeable than others. Um, when I'm doing lab testing in the scene, uh, minimum focus distances in particular is when you could really 
notice the focus breathing that like exploits it when you go from minimum to infinity you could really see that whole range of breathing and yeah over the years i've noticed some lenses are really bad especially manual lenses the cheaper ones when you turn it it like zooms a tremendous amount um i was very surprised actually on some of the lenses about that so when i saw Can on I... the ace i'm sorry yeah, go ahead, Jay. I oh when i saw that answer. focus uh when i saw the focus breathing on the a7 IV. I was like, what? I'm like, so I tested it and I'm like, that's incredible. There's, n it's none. Yeah. Like they fixed it. Like that really yeah. is amazing. Uh, yeah. So they zoom they, in just a little bit and then mm. it automatically adjusts. So it zooms into like where it would automatically zoom in more and it keeps right. it there and then it automatically adjusts. So other than like doing a focus rack where you're moving focus, like you see in movies from like one person to the next right and you'll see that shift when you're when you're doing on cinema lenses and stuff like that there's no focus breathing in those lenses but what i notice it more for like youtube and stuff like that is when you're just filming like if i'm filming myself and it loses focus for a second on me it'll jump mm -hmm. to the background on any camera um and you'll see the sh it'll see you'll see the outside punch in or out just slightly and that's yeah. where i find it to be the most distractive in my work um cuz i'm not doing a lot of those focus pulls that makes sense. Yeah, when it switches from the background back to you, it's going to be like rant, rant. Yeah, like and it just it's just eye catching. It's almost like a flicker, you know, like your mm -hmm. eye just can't it does it just can't miss it. It's it's interesting. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, Raphael's looking for waveforms. You want to see oh, waveforms on camera? Ra <laughs> Raphael. Yeah, me too. I want waveforms, shutter angle. Um, you know yeah, those kinds of things, please. Four K DVI. Uh, what else? DCI. Um, DCI. I'm sorry, I'm ignorant to that. Yeah, stuff. it's weird that it's weird they left that out of the FX3 because it's in the FX6. So, I, that what, was a what weird... exactly is that? I honestly haven't even looked it up. I, I I don't know. I don't know. It's the wider. It's the wider screen. It's like the 17 by nine instead of the 16 by nine. Oh, okay, makes sense. I don't I remember the numbers for up. the resolution. Like it's, I forget the numbers of the resolution. It's just slightly wider, but. A lot of things are filmed in DCI 4K as opposed to UHD. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, I was not aware of that. Um, yeah, I've like jotted down. Actually, the other thing, uh, you're on here, you know. What, uh, what is shutter angle? Okay, you know so shutter angle. So, yeah, so normally when we're filming video, we want to stick to the keeping the shutter speed at double the frame rate. So if we're shooting at 24 frames a second, we want to keep it at one over 48 or in these cameras, we can't do one over 48. So we put it one over 50. Or if you're shooting at 30 frames a second, you want it at one over 60. So you keep it double the frame rate, but on cinema cameras, uh, there's a, instead of having a shutter speed setting, there's a shutter angle setting. So you just set it to 180 degrees and it always keeps it exactly at double the frame rate so you don't have to worry oh, about it oh and they call that shutter angle that's why i don't that was confusing me like why would they call that shutter angle yeah so originally when film was passed through a camera uh the shutter was actually a circular mechanism and so okay. as the film went by this would rotate and open let let light in and so the the shutter angle was it was a semicircle, it was 180 degrees so as it passed oh. through it would only for each frame it would be open half the time. And so for 24 frames a second, it would be open for one over 48th of a second. That makes sense. So that's, and that's why they're- That's yeah, where the angle comes in, from. Yeah, 180 degree. Is, uh, mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Yep. Fascinating. That's cool. Uh, that's really cool. Thanks. Thanks, Josh, for explaining that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Scott. Scott's reviews. I have used the a7 IV for live streams with uh, just the cord to the computer. Yeah, that's a nice feature. It really is. You just plug it in and now you have a webcam. It, I wish Sony came out with it sooner, but better late than never, you know? Um, that's a good way to go. And the, Raphael the, and Matthew are jumping in here, to, correcting me on everything. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love it. You got to love it. That's why I tried to let you explain it, because I'm, I'm not going to try to explain. Um, and I honestly did need to look it up, though. I, 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 I had a, a suspicion of what shutter angle was, but I was wrong. You explained it perfectly. Hey, I just took a bunch of photos. All right, so Raphael's complaining. He hasn't taken any photos with the... <laughs> Listen, just because it's a lower resolution camera doesn't mean it can't take photos. This thing's quite capable. You have to dig deep into that mode button there to find where the photography feature is. But once you get in there, you can... Who uh... takes photos? Who takes yeah. photos? I got a bunch of cool food photos I wanted to show, but... All right, let's see. Uh... Oh, thank you very much, Long Rider. Long Rider gave a super chat. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, let's see here. 
Uh, Raphael's talking uh, FX3 is back ordered for months. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. I guess you're right. So maybe people are just finally getting their hands on it because it was uh, you know the chip shortage or whatever. All right. Oh, Tilly's here. Hi, Tilly. So guys, Tilly is the reason I got the FX3. Tilly reached out to me and asked for help on the FX3, uh, my beginner's guides. Yeah, obviously, a lot of my content is beginner-oriented. I seem to do a pretty good job when it comes to beginners. They tend to like my videos the way I explain it or whatever. Um, so Tilly reached out and was like, Jay, can you help me? And I'm like, you know, I never used that camera, but I'll try. So we did like a chat or whatever, and I, she held the camera up, and I'm like, oh my God, all the buttons are different. I didn't realize that all the buttons were different. I didn't know the function menu was pre-programmed completely different. I'm like, I, I'm gonna have to get my hands on that, you know? So I ended up uh, asking to see if I could borrow one of these. And uh, But the whole reason was um, Tilly asking help, asking for some help. So thanks for that, Tilly, I appreciate it. So Jay, um, you gonna buy one? What's the story? What's your what's your uh, takeaway? I, Dude, I really think I might. I, I honestly wanted to get the a7 IV, um, but I'm, I was afraid it would overheat, dude. Like, it, it, I, sometimes I do overhead work. Like, when I'm doing some of these tutorials, dude, the camera will be on for an hour, mm. you know? Yeah. And it's like 70 degrees in here. And I, if that thing shut off halfway through me babbling about how to, you know, go over the tutorial. Like, sometimes I just go on a tangent and I talk and I forget to look at the camera, you know? And when like the camera loses focus or something and I have to redo it, that's like really frustrating. But if camera shut off on me because it overheated, dude, I'd be pissed. Like now it's mm -hmm. just I have to wait, you know, so I've really been waiting a little bit. But I am i don't know, after using this, it's like maybe they'll come out with an A7C2 that'll have all of this stuff. I don't really need this extra hardened camera body, but I do want that fan. So I don't know. I can't afford it right now. All that Mac stuff just came out, and I kind of want. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I don't even want to get into that right now. We're we're talking about Sony cameras today, right? Yeah, yeah. But yes, I do okay. want the FX3. But I'll tell you, I was like hard set on getting the A7 IV until you brought up what you were talking you about, about earlier. You yeah, why don't that? we why don't we talk about what happened with your A7 IV? Because like I said, you came out with a video the other day. You showed off what the A7 IV can do. You took tons of footage. And you were really impressed. I was impressed with what you got. I used the camera and had no issues with it whatsoever as far as overheating or anything like that. So it seemed like the logical choice for people like us. It just did. It was like cheaper, did what we needed. Um, but yeah, you, you have more experience. So please share um, what happened to you. Yeah, so I, as soon as they announced this, and you guys can go back and look on my channel too, like I have several videos where I'm like, I'm worried about the overheating. Like before, when, even when it first got announced, I'm like, okay, oversampled camera, no fan. I'm worried about overheating. Same thing with like the R5, R6, all that stuff. Um, and I got this camera right when it came out. I've been shooting on it as much as possible. And yeah, I, I put out a video. I'm like, it, I think it's a better camera for most people. And I think that's still true. Uh, it is a hybrid camera, but if you need a professional video camera, I'm not sure this is going to be this, the right camera for everyone at this point. Um, and I have had some overheating issues. And when the camera first came out, I'd made a video and I collaborated with uh, my buddy, Chris Brockhurst, and we did a bunch of tests so we could put it together and like just get that information out there. And I really didn't have any issues. 4K24 ran for like an hour and a half or two hours, like no problem. I had problems with 4K60 after an hour. And I was like, I don't ever run 4K60 for an hour. And in normal use, like I was vlogging, I've been filming my course on this camera, so at least some of the modules, no problem. It was 80 degrees here the other day. I was outside filming for like three or four hours on and off. Um, no problem, no warnings. But where I did run into issue was in my office here um, doing like I do these interviews that I, I, you know, I'm streaming through the computer, through the camera, and I'm also recording. And it overheated on me um, actually while I was recording the one with Matthew <laughs> as he puts the suit out there. <laughs> And I, it was like, oh, man, this is terrible. And so I put in my FX3 because I knew that would work. Um, and so I was powering it with USB-C on the side. So it would run longer, obviously. I didn't have to worry about the battery. And then I got a dummy battery. And pretty much the same thing happened today. Uh, I was doing another one of those interviews. And we were you know, maybe chatting for an hour ahead of time, uh, shooting in, you know, in 4K. And then I turned the camera on to record. And like 15 or 20 minutes later, it overheated on me. I thought the dummy battery would be able to keep more of the heat out of the camera. Uh, That's what was, I thought. And, and this was actually on two different units too, because I bought a second A7 IV, which I just returned today. 
So it wasn't my unit because I was hearing a lot of discussion online about like, oh, I got one camera that was really bad. And someone else was like, no, mine's fine. So this was two different units having basically the same problem um, with different power delivery. So to me, if you're looking for like long form, reliable 4K video, this might be problem free for overheating. But if you're vlogging or shooting short clips or doing stuff like that, like I haven't had any problem overheating whatsoever. It's just this one specific case. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. Like I haven't had any problem with it otherwise. Yeah, that is shocking. Like I wonder, you know, like you said, you were recording, you were recording and um, you're recording, you had a dummy battery and you were powering it with USB. So I wonder if. No, no, no. US... Those are separate things. So I, okay. the first time I was powering with USB-C, there's a batter, the normal batteries in the camera and I'm powering with USB-C. It okay. overheated All right. in, that, in that situation. So in that situation, I was HDMI, you know, out of the camera into my computer and I was also okay. recording internally. Um, right. I didn't so try you recording using, externally. You weren't using the USB-C as a webcam. You were using the HDMI into HDMI. a cam link or whatever. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Exactly. And then All the right. second time didn't have USB, but I was using a dummy battery and same thing happened. And both times you were recording also. I was, I was probably chatting for an hour and a half ahead of time where we were chatting. And then once I hit record, it was like 15 minutes later, it overheated. Yeah, so that live streaming, it's probably working the sensor, or at least heat-wise, to the maximum. And then when you hit record, that was it. It was just it was already at it was already at temperature, and then record brought it right over. You know that it seems like that's but, huh. Yeah, there's but nothing it's you weird can do about so, that. It's a weird thing is I got the dummy battery, and before I used it today, I actually plugged it into the camera and ran the camera for four hours, um, just recording 4K footage and no overheating. Hmm. So something's going on when either HDMI out is working or yeah. that in combination. So maybe it's that specific case. Um, but, uh, and yeah, Raphael's in here talking about not changing the overheating setting. Yes, I changed the overheat <laughs> setting to high. You have it set to low, Josh? I mean, have you checked that? <laughs> no, no, no. That's like, the, I said that in like four <laughs> videos. It was like the first thing I said, I was like, make sure it's set to high. Um, so I don't know if it's just this weird situation because I haven't had the issue in any other situation, but um, I just wanted to let people know. I haven't like made a video about it reported yet. It just happened to me today. So just letting you know that there is, there's going to be some situations where this thing can, is not going to be hundred percent reliable in terms of overheating. Yeah. But that's super valuable information because I've, I've recorded extended time with the a seven four and I had no issue. You just said you recorded for four hours with no issue. Now with the, yeah, the problem over four the, hours. The problem seems to be if you're streaming HDMI. So that HDMI circuit, when that's enabled on the camera, it looks like it has to do extra processing, encoding, whatever it's got to do for the clean HDMI out. Clearly, that's introducing a lot of heat draw, battery, whatever it's doing, it's tripping the heat way quicker right. than it would in any other case. So it, keep it in mind, though, that would be an issue if you're using a monitor, too. Like if you're using an external monitor while yeah. you're recording. That's so it's not point. just for streaming. Um, no, it, no, that's I true. It would be working the same way. So that's a big problem because I was going to use it as my main camera, put a monitor on it and all that, and I'm not going to now. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, we got a super chat here from Matthew. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, who doesn't love some camera talk? Uh, be sure to check out Matthew's channel too, by the way. He just put out a cool video on the new Mac stuff, that new uh, desktop studio or whatever they're calling it they came out with. Uh, it was it was really fun uh, checking that out. And by the way, Josh's channels are linked in the description area as well. Be sure to check out his channels. He does some really good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, oh, nice. Thanks, we got Jay. AJ. AJ's here. Um, he was uh, in my live stream last time too. I ditched the A7 IV for the A7S III last week. Um, I love having a viewfinder. So for me, the FX3 was a no-go. I still got my A7C. There you go. Fair enough. Yeah, 100%, man. That makes sense. So a lot of people use that viewfinder, and I, I don't blame them at all. It's just like a comfort thing. Um, you feel uh, there's a lot of advantages to it. I, I used to be a really heavy uh, viewfinder user because I came from the Canon 5D Mark II, and I was doing professional photography for years. So all I had was the viewfinder pretty much. I mean, you don't use the screen to take photos with a DSLR back then. It like wasn't really a thing. Uh, since then, it's changed, you know? So now I'm more and more using the screen, but... Um, that that's, you know, that's just a fact, Jack, you gotta, you gotta do what works for you. 
And uh, I always tell people, if you use the viewfinder, definitely get the A7S III or, you know, even the A7C, some people complain. I think the viewfinder's fine for my purposes, but compared to like a really good viewfinder, the A7C viewfinder sucks. But for my purposes, I just need to see it. Like, can I see what's going on? Good. Like, I don't really care. It, it just depends on the type of user you are. And the EVF on the A7S III is like so nice. It's like that 9.44 million dot. I don't even know the numbers. I think it's something like that. It's like I never, way better yeah. than the, It's really nice. I I don't. I never I don't had the uh, opportunity to use it. I, heard, I don't use the EVF. I, I never use it. That's why I don't care. It would be. It would actually make sense. They Sony used to make one when they came out with the the Nex F three. It was called. They had a, a viewfinder attachment that you can put into the hot shoe, and it gave you the ability for a viewfinder. I I just I don't understand why Sony doesn't offer that for like the FX three or or you know for example like the, they could make a high quality A seven S three type viewfinder, make it modular so it goes into the hot shoe, and that would solve a lot of problems for people, I think, you know? Yeah. And you could even I use that. The you know, yeah, the extender cable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was just gonna say that extender cable for the KLR, you know, attachment for the A7S, how hey, you could move it to a cold shoe. You could probably use that for the viewfinder as well if they made that. Um I would it's just an interesting thought. Uh let's see here. Got a couple more comments here. Here we go. What do we got? Pete. Have the A7 IV and the ZV-1. Love them both for different applications. Yeah, ZV-1's great. Super compact, capable. It's got that good mic on the top as well. Uh, let's see, we got another one here. Geeky, nerdy, techie. All right, the FX3 is a great camera. I'm late here, but if uh, you just got it, congrats. Oh, right on. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get it myself. I'm just playing with it. Um, I got it right here. It's got to go back, though. It's got to go back tomorrow, which is one of the reasons why we're doing this live stream today. Um, oh, nice. Uh, thank you, Tilly. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Let's see. Raphael. All right. DCI. Yeah, I see all the corrections. I'm a little bit behind in the in the chat here. You see any good questions, Josh, that I missed by any chance? I, I was like, any. it's just Matthew giving me a hard time about my camera overheating. Um all right. Well, you got the shutter angle correct. Good job. Yeah, that's funny. All right. Let's see. We've got one more here. Thanks again, Tilly. I appreciate it. Um, all right. So did you get that? Did you get the FX6 yet, Josh? You said you got that. You have it, right? Or you no, getting you, the can't, FX6? you can't get an FX6, man. I'd buy one if I could find one. They're out of stock till December right now. <laughs> okay. And they've been out of stock since like October. Um, Jesus. Yeah, I, for, as far as I'm concerned, that camera's basically discontinued. So, I don't know. I, I could definitely use it for my work, um, but I'm gonna have to make do with what I have right now. Um, not that I'm saying make do. Like FX3 is a great camera, but <laughs> um, there's some things in that camera that I really do love. But um, I think it's kind of out of the scope for this discussion, really. Do, do you want to talk right. any more differences between these two cameras? I mean, I could talk all day probably about this stuff, but. Well, yeah, like so. Everyone keeps saying the A7S three is the same as the FX three. So, what what are the what's the key difference that you that stands out to you? Why you got the FX three, or why yeah, you want to so keep it? Let's say over the A7S three or the A7 four. Correct, both. Uh, so okay, so the the S three, um, basically, yeah. If, if you need the EVF, which I never use it, so for me that's not a bonus. Um, I like how it's a little bit shorter. I don't, you have it in front of you, but like, because that EVF is lopped off on the top, like if I am doing a sort of vlogging or filming myself, like it just keeps the height of the camera down a little bit. Cause I put a big microphone on the hot shoe there and it keeps it a little bit smaller. As I said, I do looks like the form factor, the grip, all of the buttons on the back are all labeled for video features, which I love. Like you have, like, I can see that you have like shutter and I can't see mine. I'm using it right now, but Jason's got yeah. it up there. It's got peaking. zebra, peaking, shutter, yep. and then on the top, it's got iris, you know, ISO. Yeah, it's like white that. balance. So, like, I set, because I interchanged between those two cameras, like, I actually set the, the second custom button on my A7 IV to white balance so it's in the same sort of spot as the FX3. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, because I just got used to that camera. Uh, one thing that's really minor is I like the menu button on the right-hand side. <laughs> I know it's <laughs> it's silly, but, like, when you're holding the camera, you can it's hit it It's not silly thumb. at all. I hate it on the um, left. I hate it on the left. It, um, I can't reach it. I, I know you have to. It's always like awkward. 
I know these mm -hmm. are little things, but the big thing for me was the audio inputs and I've owned the XLR K3M, oh. which is that module that slides onto, onto the top of any of the Sony cameras. And Jason, we had a discussion about this offline too, about how strong that was. But to me, like the FX3 handle bolts in, like you put it in and then there's two screws that you screw in and it's much more uh, robust. And so to me, as someone yeah, who does a lot of run gun documentary work, like that is good. And I think there's been some questions about the overall build quality on the handle. Like it is all plastic uh, for the most part, but I, I just come careful with it. Um, but the fact that I can do 24 bit audio, like right into the camera um, anytime is just, it's awesome for me. I do use a lot of XLR mics. So that was the big difference for me. A couple of other minor things. If you want to get nit really nitpicky, um, the mic jack on the FX3 is not out of the way when you flip out the screen. So if you have a mic, if you do a lot of vlogging and you like open up the screen, Jay, and like rotate it out, it'll hit that flap. Or it might not hit the flap, but if you had a mic plugged in, it would hit it. Yeah, right here it hits. Like it'll bump it. Yeah, you but mean? if you if you had a mic plugged in there, like and you open the screen, it'll hit. It doesn't on the A7S3. Um, I know some people I see have what you mean. made the I made yeah, some the people, door. The I've door is some, long. Right, but even if you had a mic plugged in right there, like and you rotate it, it'll hit that. If you plug in a mic and you'll see it'll hit it. Um, some people have gone for the A7S3 just because of that, that they can swivel the screen and not hit the mic jack. So um, those are the big things. And again, I haven't had, I've never heard of anyone really overheating an A7S3, but the peace of mind with the FX3 um, to me was a big deal. But I think they they missed the boat, they missed the mark on a couple things, calling it the cinema line camera. Like Raphael yeah. was talking about waveforms. Like I wish they put um more cinema camera features waveform false color would have been huge although false color is not in the fx6 um and also um uh, what was the other? shutter angle so those are the things i wish were in there for sure um but otherwise those are the big differences um and i have to say that i thought for a long time that the fx3 was just like it's an a7s3 it's like no, it feels like a different camera it's hard to describe uh, yeah. but it really it just is um i don't know if do you want want to talk about a7 IV or do you have anything to yeah, well, about that, those two cameras? No, the, the the well, what I noticed in particular, uh, the a7 IV has the uh, what was that feature you were just talking about? The color one, um, false color. Doesn't the a7 IV yes. have that? No, it has it has focus mapping. This is probably what you're oh, that's about, what it has. Is, the, yeah, it's focus a different mapping. type of focus peaking, which I played with. I made a video about. Um, I don't use it, so okay, I prefer focus peaking. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, false colors, when you see it, it's built into a lot of external monitors and some cinema cameras where you hit a button and then all the different colors on the screen show up depending on the exposure. So if you know your skin tones need to be a certain color or certain exposure, it'll show up as a certain color. Uh, it's okay. really helpful for exposing. Uh, pretty much every external monitor has it. Um, That's cool. Yep. Yeah, I never used it myself. Cameras. I actually oh, saw so handy. The, uh, the Final Cut Pro did a video where you can add that to... Um, Final Cut, so you can, like, I don't know, one of the plugins you could use, so you could use false color. Um, I didn't actually try it, but I did see that. Um, somebody actually asked a pretty good question here. Wait a uh, minute, Matthew said he got it. Text Matthew now. <laughs> <laughs> What's he talking smack? No, he said someone bought an FX9 for seventy five hundred dollars at their shop. <laughs> like, oh, do they have any more? Oh yeah, there it is. My buddy got one. Wow, that's a good price. It is. That's, that's a eleven thousand dollar camera. All right. Hello there. Uh, it would be appreciated if you could advise for which best settings for a video shooter uh, shooting or shooting sport car action on sand with the a7 III. Oh, wow. Sports car shooting in sand with the a7 S3, man. I, I would definitely want that thing in like some kind of uh, dust bag. So sand can get in the camera. <laughs> That's for settings, not like protection. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm just saying, the first thing that came to my mind was like, are you crazy? Like, there's going to be dust flying everywhere if that car is ripping through sand at 50 miles an hour sideways. Um, Definitely put a filter on the front of your lens. That's all I have to say. Yeah, a UV filter at the very least. But um, for settings like that, you're going to want to have your, in my opinion anyways, you're going to want to have your autofocus tracking set to a faster speed because you're tracking a fast-moving subject. Um, you could use, I would probably use center... I'd probably use center focus area. Now, mind you, there's a million ways to do this. I'm not saying this is the right way. This is just how I would do it. I personally like having a focus area in the center of the camera when I'm tracking moving subjects. It makes it easier. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Um, so I would recommend maybe using zone focus on your camera, have it in the center area, 
and then just try to keep the car in the center as you're filming and do some testing. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely have the shutter speed. Hmm. I don't know. You'd probably be better off recording at 60 for something like that, but I don't want to see that the camera can't really do that in full frame mode. So, oh, A7 yeah, I guess, three. Yes, yeah, um, A7 three. We could do 1080 at 60. In a while. Yeah, maybe have, can you set that S and Q up for like 1080, 60 or 1080, 120? And then just flip it over to S and Q if you need to switch to slow motion? Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, if you're looking to get slow motion. I'm not sure if, if that's what he's going for. Uh, but yeah, slow motion. I'm just motion, thinking like at some point yeah. you might want, it might be cool. Uh, the A7 three does 1080 at uh, 120, right? I believe yeah. so. Yeah, and it does 1080 at 60, too, which 60. would probably be good mm -hmm. for the moving cars, you know, having that extra I want to see the it'll... sand going in 120, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Actually, the well, 120 on that camera is awesome. I, I remember shooting 120 on the a7 III. It's really good. I used it a lot myself. I had that camera multiple yeah. times uh, over, over the past year or two. Um, yeah, good question. All right. Let's see. We've got another one here. Uh, let's see. We're looking at 552. Okay. Let's see. we got one here from T one more from Tilly here. I did a lot of research on the FX3 because I'm going to hot weather country. So I needed a camera that won't get hot. And so far, the FX3 is the best camera for hot weather. You're absolutely right. After the research I did and after talking to you about it, you are correct. That is the best <laughs> option. You know, if you're traveling to Egypt, Africa, South America, wherever, and you plan on doing documentary work in 90 plus temperatures, you need a real hardcore camera. And the FX3 is the most affordable option, honestly, for something like that, um, full frame wise, anyways. Uh, there are other options out there, but not with the same technology Sony offers. Uh, let's see. Waiting for the A7R5. Oh. George. A7R5, I don't know when that's going to be out, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, we're all waiting. I'm kind of waiting for the RX10 5, to be honest. It's been years since they came out with the, the RX10 4. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Want another question here from... Uh, sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Nipen? Nipen sounds right. I don't know. Oh, let me grab some memory cards. Sure, man. Which memory card is best uh, for the Sony FX3? Let me show you the one I'm using. I, I just want to grab mine too. I don't have the overhead rig set up though. <laughs> Let's see. There Come on, go. focus. I, there you go. I'm using this guy right here. It's like backwards. So it's it's a fairly affordable card. I think it was like somewhere around a hundred dollars. And it's a UHS two card, one twenty eight gigabytes, and it writes fast enough to pretty much record in almost any format. So Pretty good stuff. What do you got, Josh? All right. So, so if you're going to shoot 4K 120, you need to buy the stupid expensive cards. Um, the Sony CF Express Type A cards. They're stupid expensive. If you want to shoot in the highest modes on this camera, you do need this for a couple of modes. Um, these are $400 for 160 gigs. So they're super expensive. I have one of them just so I can shoot in those modes when I want to. Um, but there's only a couple of modes and I don't remember off the top of my head, which ones, but if you 4k 120, maybe you can do 4k 120 in like, um, and not all in like an IPB, like not all, not the all I've won the, the XAVCS instead of, um, SI. I can't remember. There's yeah, the SI, a couple of the modes. SI one. I think you need that card, but the regular mode, you don't, I, I recorded okay. everything on mine. No problem, but not SI. Is that a V90? Is that a V90? Um, yes. Okay. So yeah, yeah I, I would probably recommend if you, if you're going to be shooting 4k 120 and you want like maximum quality, plus these things are super fast to unload footage off of. I actually lo really like these cards and they just feel a little bit more durable. Um, I've had really good luck with the pro grade cards. Uh, they're a lot cheaper than the Sony tough cards. Um, and you can get, I think they make them up to 256. That's what I'm using for everything now is the V90, uh, pro grade cards. I think a lot of people have been using these lately. They're just, they're good value. So that's what I'd probably recommend. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Hopefully that helps you out, bud. Um, all right. Let's see. The FX9. I might as well throw that up quick. So that's what I'm saying, people... Matthew. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for sharing, buddy. <laughs> that deal's uh, already gone, Matthew. Thanks, dude. Uh, just so you know, it's no longer available and my friend's happy. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's see. All right. So 
Uh, thanks, buddy. Make the best beginner videos. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Geeky Tech. Got a couple more here. That's cool. We got a lot of comments going. This is fun. A7S has the best viewfinder. Yeah, Josh was saying that 9 million dot. The FX3 is killer, but if you need an EVF at all, it's a deal breaker. Both of them have never over overheated on me outdoors in hot conditions. All right, there you go. Real world, real world experience there. All right, do you think they will add focus breathing comp on the FX3? I don't know. I honestly thought that they would. Um, I didn't have a chance to check for the firmware update to see the details. Yeah, no, it's... No, the last firmware update's from April of last year. Oh, okay. So there isn't one. I honestly, I don't think so. I, I, I believe it. I think if Sony were to do that, they would have came out with the firmware update already. So I don't know if the if it requires a new chipset because like the F the A seven four came out with they they added a Cinetone and a couple. What did they do? They did something. Mm -hmm. I think with the the A seven S three, they were able to add the Cinetone to that camera. But other cameras, they didn't add it to. So I, there is some kind of limitation. And it also has something to do with Sony's plans for the future as well. So if you see them come out with a firmware update for a camera, that usually means they're not going to come out with a new model of that camera for a while. So it, just in my experience of dealing with Sony for all these years. So the fact that they didn't come out with one, maybe they're going to come out with a newer version. Uh, it, Hard to say, though. It really is. I don't know. I'm kind of back and forth about that, if that's going to happen or not. I really hope they do. Um, my initial thought was, well, they put in the FX6, which has the same sensor as the FX3 and A7S3, but it does have a different... There's, I think there's some different insta inside stuff because that runs off the cinema menu system, operating system, versus the photo operating system. Um, but they also didn't put in the A1 yet. So to me... That's really why I think we might see it in the FX3 and A7S3 because it's not in the A1. And that is like their flagship camera. It should have all the bells and whistles. So um, That's a good I, was point. Really I was really surprised that they had they put in the FX6 though and not the FX3, but it's on the A1. So I'm just, I'm holding out for it, but I, I, I'm i like 50-50. That's sort of my opinion. Tech wise, I thought like maybe give it to us and say, you can't use it with active stabilization because it punches in too much on the 12 megapixel mm. sensor. Maybe that was the limitation I originally thought of, but I don't know. I think you're right though. Maybe it has to do with future cameras. Maybe the A1 Mark II is coming out next year. Like I have no idea. You know what? That that point about the resolution limitation could be it. It could be but something give it that to me, simple, you know? But give it to me and like not let me turn on active stabilization, you know? That's the problem, though. They they don't like that. I, I don't think they want people to be able to do something that would degrade the quality. You know, uh, it's almost like they'd rather lock it down than allow that possibility to happen. You know what I'm saying? I think it seems some, silly. There's some, features, I, I, there's some features where active stabilization is not available, some frame rates and stuff, I think. Oh, yeah, that's true. No, but I meant, I meant, yeah, that would be that would solve the problem. I meant like allowing you to use active, but then it causing a problem. You know yeah, yeah, no, that, that, yeah, yeah. But I originally I was like, oh, maybe there's not enough megapixels to be able to punch in enough because some yeah. of the some of the lenses need like a ten or twelve percent crop to cover that focus breathing, and okay. so I was worried about not having enough megapixels. But active stabilization is way more than that. So if they just said like, we'll just get rid of that if you're using focus breathing, I think that would be a fair compromise. Yeah, that sounds fair. Does active doesn't active punch in a little bit or no? That's what I'm saying though. Is if if there isn't enough megapixels to allow active stabilization and focus breathing compensation, just say, okay. if you turn focus breathing compensation on, you can't turn, turn active stabilization on. Gotcha, if there's gotcha. Enough... It won't be able to do both combined. Yeah. I'd be sense. fine with that. I'd yeah, be fine with that's... that. I don't, how many people use active stabilization? Do you use it a lot? Um, No, I mean, I mostly shoot on tripods or gimbals. So for me, if I need to be handheld, I usually put on a gimbal. Um, but once in a while, like if I'm doing... I don't vlog a ton, but you know, like the other day I made a I vlog and I did a couple of quick handheld shots. I turned it on for that. Cool. But not that often. All right. Um, Scott, you're waiting for the RX03, huh? <laughs> I'm not sure how many people are on that list, but that is a cool, compact, tough camera for sure. I never had a chance to use one myself, but it's like a the RXO is like a really rugged kind of GoPro sort of camera, but it has that large one inch sensor. So it's uh, going to offer much better image quality than the GoPro ever could. Um, all right, what's this going on? 
Oh, okay. He's still he's still <laughs> praising you for selling him on the FX3. <laughs> Do you know how, uh, how hard it was to conv convince Raphael? He's been shooting Canon forever. He was like, I don't know. I'm like, just, you got to try it. That's funny. He's been happy. How could you not be? All right. Speed test on SD cards. I'm just looking here to see if there's any more questions because we're about to wrap up here in a minute. All right, guys. Uh, we got about five minutes left, and then we're going to have to get going here. Uh, let's see here. Edit. Hey, anybody uh, who who's here using an uh, A7 IV? If you're using an A7 IV, let me know in the comments. Edit simple Final Cut Pro. Let's see. Let me bring this one up here. New to this, uh, have a Final Cut Pro, but also have an M1 iPad Pro, LumaFusion. Going to find LumaFusion lacking. Do I need to focus on learning Final Cut Pro? Or... I never used LumaFusion, uh, so I can't really say. But um, Final Cut Pro is awesome for editing video. That's for sure. I know that. Uh, but I, I apologize. I can't really speak about LumaFusion. I never used it. I don't know if that's an iPad equivalent or something. Um, all right. Oh, uh, somebody's blaming me for getting the Sony A7. Uh, <laughs> hey, listen, man. At the time, it was uh, it was the one to get. <laughs> All right. Sorry if my question is off topic. Uh, let's see. That's a good question, Scott. And you know, when I was when I had the F uh, the A7 IV. I was going through the menu, and when you go into the firmware area for the A7 IV, there was a little button there that looked like in the future you were going to be able to just press it, and it was going to update the firmware. I've never seen that option on any other camera, but the A7 IV had it. So I hope Sony does that, because updating the firmware on Sony cameras on a Macintosh is not the easiest process, to say the least. you got to go deep into the like menus and stuff to... Uh, enable and disable and unlock and lock it's crazy hey what's up brian thanks for coming man appreciate it brian francisco just stopped by awesome very cool all right a74 scott you got an a74 anybody else in here all right scott uh i got something for you man you come to my live streams all the time hang on a sec I have to entertain you guys, I guess, while Joe Jay's walking around. <laughs> I put it somewhere. Hey, if you guys are watching, make sure you hit the like button, please. Uh, help, help out Jay here with this live stream. That'll be cool. Oh, what's that? Nothing, nothing. You didn't miss anything. I was just talking, talking smack oh, about you while you were gone. Today. I found it. All right, Scott, I got something for you, buddy. This is for you. Send me an email and I'll send it your way. It's a uh, A7 IV camera cage from Small Rig. It's for you, buddy. Just send me an email. I'll send it out to you. Hopefully you're in the United States and it won't cost me so much to ship. <laughs> but uh, all right, so that's what we got. Scott's Reviews, A7 IV winner. Uh, let's just say enjoy that cage. And... Um, I don't know. I guess we're going to wrap it up here, Josh. I Listen, I okay. really appreciate you uh, offering to join in this live stream. It was great. It was a lot of fun. And uh, it definitely made it way more fun having you here. So it's nice having an extra person, super knowledgeable. <laughs> well, thanks for having me, Jay. Anytime you want to hang out and talk about cameras, I mean, it's like one of the most fun things to do. It's always fun to nerd out about this stuff. So uh, yeah. yeah, I live and, breathe, live and breathe all this gear and I'm constantly like trying to figure out the best combo and situation and Trying to use it in different situations. I think it's cool to talk to people that use cameras in different ways than you do because things come up and you're like, I didn't even think about using it that way. Or, yeah, well, I, I don't, you know, it, and it's helpful when, especially when you're recommending cameras and taking questions from people. So, yeah, very cool, man. Thanks for bringing me on today. Yeah, right on, man. Absolutely. All right. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys coming by. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Like I said, I have the, FX3, I have a beginner's guide coming out for this camera shortly, and uh, I just published a video on it today explaining who I believe the FX3 is for. It's just my opinion, but I, after using it and doing research and playing with it and everything, I came out with that video, and uh, I thought it was pretty good, so be sure to check that out as well. So I'll catch up with you guys later, and uh, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Josh, I'll catch up with you, man. 
All right, guys. Take care.